Good evening and thanks for joining us on Football Countdown. We are coming to you live from the studio. My name is Reem. It is my first time hosting the show. Very, very excited. I'm surrounded by three gentlemen here. And when I say gentle, gentlemen, because I'm stressing on that word, because I know you guys can get pretty feisty, especially these two on my left here. Um, Steve McMahon as well as Stanley Bernard, um, the house... Wife's favorite, that's according what, to Steve. That's what usually well, that's what yeah. that's what Stanley asked to be called. Right, and of course Gary <laughs> Stevens. <just> <laughs> now, earlier today, um, or earlier in the show when we started off, we showed you a montage of the newly crowned Premier League champions, Chelsea. We are kicking off the show talking about them today. Um, they had a sluggish start, but then you know they won the title with two games in hand. So, how would you compare this team versus Chelsea's past winning teams? Who wants to start? Well, you kick it off? Well, firstly, I mean, if you go to Mourinho's uh, first title going back to 2004, just look at the stats. 15 goals conceded. Maka, what do you think of it? When someone wins the title, 15 goals conceded back Perfect. in 2004, 2005. Perfect way to do it. Yeah. It's his start, he's, he's made, a, he made a, a statement saying he starts from the defence. You can play uh, as much attractive football as you like, like Liverpool have done, Arsenal have done over the past. But if you do, don't... and will not stop goals going in the back of your net, then you're going to win zero, uh, as, as proven with lots of clubs. So yeah. he's got the foundations spot on, and I like what he's doing. Plus, they're not bad going forward, by the way. You yeah. can talk about how many goals he ever conceded. They're going that way, they're sensational. Yeah, well, there's more than one way to win the title, isn't there? Let's be honest. And, and at, at the risk of like throwing a bucket of cold water on the, the debate before we start, you know, I think that the, the five titles that Chelsea have won in recent times, um, you know, Mourinho, Ancelotti and Conte, um, I put them all on a par. Mm -hmm. Purely and simply for one reason, because it's all about finishing first and yeah. all of them finished It's first. like you, yeah, good point. You ask any player or any manager what was the best and, and mm. most satisfying Trophy, they'll say the last one. Yeah. They'll always say, because you never know when you're going to win another one. Well, you're only as good as your last win. Which, it's always your last one. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's, that's the most important. And I think on this occasion, he's done it, basically, with Mourinho's side. Yeah. He's only changed a couple of players. Kante's come in and Luis came in, which is the start of how he changed and a platform to build on when he had the shaky start. He brought Luis in, he changed the system, and all of a sudden, bang, he was off and running. Yep. Now, Gary mentioned um, the five winning teams. Of course, Mourinho's won it three times, Ancelotti once, and Conte as well. We have a graphic here comparing the five different teams, the stats, 2004-2005 um, season. Of course, the least goals conceded um, with Ancelotti the most. And then, um, yeah, Conte with 90 mm. points so far. The chance He has a chance to bring it up to 93. Um, a lot of people are saying that Mourinho's 2004-2005 is the best. Do you agree, Stan? Um, yeah, because it was tight. Um, I think that's the first time Chelsea actually had a genuine chance and they went on and win it. Mm -hmm. I think it's that fever, mm -hmm. the fact that Chelsea all of a sudden seen as contenders and then they win it the first time. Mm -hmm. And defensively was where I think, I mean, as, as much as you say a win is a win, winning the title doesn't matter how you win it. I think he opened the eyes of, of the entire world what kind of manager he is, what kind of approach he is in, in back in 2004-2005. So for me, that squad will be one of the best squads to win. I think it's the it's the most least conceded ever in the Premier League for a team to win the title since the Premier League was introduced. So that shows a lot. But just coming back to Conte, uh, the huge difference, why I brought up the, the factor of that 15 goals, we did, we did see a very, very pragmatic approach from Mourinho back then. But with Conte, we did not see that. We, we wanted to watch we, Chelsea we, week in, week out. We expected they it. They entertained. We expected it. We, we expected, expected, it. expected it, but we did say that he's Italian. He might, be, uh, he might be a bit more defensive. It's his first season in the Premier League. He might be a bit more cautious, but he wasn't. Uh, and, and he played a formation where, with Luis, you only can play that formation. Good point, Michael brother. It was Luis. Uh, um, huge difference. Few managers have used him in various positions. Easier centre-back, easier defensive midfielder. So for me, 
Antonio Conte showed what, what is Luis about. He's good with the ball, but you, he needs help around him defensively. And, and Kante, for me, two seasons in a row, Leicester City last season, for me, he was the best player. And this season, again, for me, he is the absolute key figure of why Chelsea have won the Premier League okay, this season. Okay, just, sorry, guys. If, if you're the chairman, if you're a current chairman and owner of a club, and Conte and Mourinho come available, you've got a choice. Which one do you take at this moment in time as your manager to, to, to run you forward, to it's move no you brainer. forward? It's a no-brainer. Antonio Who? Conte. It's a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think he's the new kid on the block now. Yeah. I really he do. Is. Um, you know, I'm, I don't like Mourinho's attitude. I really like Conte's <laughs> attitude. But but if you look at all those five title wins for for Chelsea, three Mourinho, one Ancelotti, one Conte, you know, there's some really common factors in there for me. And and it's what you need to win a title, regardless of how you play, whether you have a back four or a back three. You know, whether you're you're very defensive like Mourinho was in his first and only concedes 15 goals or whether you're a bit more a, a, you know, like adventurous like Ancelotti. Yeah. But for me, it's about the backbone. It's about the keeper. And if you look at it, Petr Cech was in goal for, for Mourinho's f three and also for Ancelotti. And then they've had a great goalkeeper in Courtois. Courtois. Okay? And then if you look at somebody in the middle of the defence, John Terry's been predominantly in all of those. And you could <coughs> argue that David Luiz and, and Cahill may be under Conte now. Then if you look into midfield, it's kind of who's going to boss it. You know, Mourinho's first title, Claude Makélélé, was yeah. that holding player in and front of the back four. ACN and his players. second one. And then maybe Matic took over, didn't he? And then under Ancelotti, SEM was in there. Um, so, so that backbone, keeper, centre-half, middle spine, of midfield, yes, a goal scorer up front, so it's Drogba, wasn't it? And, and this year it's been uh, Costa. Costa. Um, and then I think you need that magic ingredient. Flair. Magic ingredient, you know, so Lampard, Mourinho's first one, Lampard from midfield scores 13 goals. His second one, Lampard scores 16 goals from midfield. His third one, Eden Hazard, scores 14 goals from midfield. Um, and then if you look at this year, for example, it's Eden Hazard again. But he, ha he had the players, he had these players last year. He had Costa, mm. he, he, he had uh, Courtois, well, he had Hazard, yeah. he had Matic. Well, that's moving on to the next topic, he, he, isn't it? Yeah. That's about dealing with and managing your that's players the and getting the, the best out of better, them. better, Conte or, or Mourinho. He lost a plot at, at that stage mm. of the season mm -hmm. with the physio, the, the lady physio and, and things that went off the pitch. So, and remember, he left out um, Conte this year, Terry, the leader. Mm. It was a brave decision. Everyone says, OK, he's a bit past yeah. his sell-by day, yeah. but he's a brave decision. But he didn't just bomb him, did he? He, he kept him involved, he, he kept did. him on but side. But he's hardly played him. Uh, well, no, he's hardly it's played him, but, you know, he has, on a couple of occasions, but, just slid him in. But a brave move, nevertheless. Yeah. Yeah. But, but mm -hmm. it's, something, it's something Mourinho did uh, at Inter Milan as well. You've got to remember, Materazzi was on the bench when they won the Champions League, mm -hmm. and the league that year, the treble that Inter Milan won, Materazzi, right after that final, when they won the mm -hmm. Champions League, he's not played a single minute. He runs towards Mourinho and hugs. And you do know as players, no matter how much a team wins, uh, when they don't play, they do have that little self-consciousness, you know, I've not played a bit of a grudge. But it shows, I mean, what I'm saying is keeping your captain, the club captain, is absolutely crucial. Whether he's playing or not, it's absolutely crucial. Yeah, well, I, I agree, I agree. OK, so Stan, how would you then rank Conte's team right now um, amongst these five teams? Um, I actually will put it as uh, the best so far. OK. I think Ancelotti's team scored a lot of goals. But they, they weren't as stable as Conte. Mm -hmm. Conte, it looks like as if when they take a lead, they're going to get that, that three points mm -hmm. throughout the season. There was no doubt in, in certain points where they were going to win matches. So one, of the biggest, stable. one of yeah. the biggest things we looked at on the caption, and on, indeed on there, was 47 mm -hmm. players is used. When most of the, the, the other teams yeah. and, and squads that are built were 118 changes in, 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 the, in the teams all over the season, which is quite a lot. But he stuck to a tried and trusted formation. And he's only very recently put in youngsters. Yeah. So, and Steve, he, you would pick Conte as well? As the yeah, best? I would. I think it's been different because, as well, with the, with the, um, the competition, Guardiola, expectations of him coming in, the new, new kid on the block. Klopp's second season for Liverpool, or his first season, full season. Mm -hmm. So, everybody's got Mourinho's first season at Manchester United. Mm -hmm. So, the pressure was there from yeah. the big, big clubs yeah. to yeah. produce. And I think yeah. he stuck with them. And the way Tottenham have played this year, Gary, yeah. and for, for Chelsea yeah. to keep going and banging out that door week yeah. in, week out, it's been yeah. sensational. And, and I, I, you've, you've stolen my thunder a little bit on that one, Steve. I have to go for Conte purely and simply because every year it gets more difficult. I don't care what anybody and says. It gets more difficult. You know, the, the, the bar keeps rising all the time. And, and we did say, I mean, we were walking into the season this season 
we did call it a manager's season. We've got to mm. remember that. All of us said with Pep coming in, Mourinho coming at United, with what happened at Chelsea last season, and you've got Arsene Wenger who's been, who's been there for many, many years, and you've got Pochettino who's, been, who's done really well. So it was a manager's season, and in a manager's season, Antonio Conte has come really on top. on top. It's as simple as that. So yeah. that's why he must final, be one of the and best. And a cool final still to come. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's unanimous. Everyone says Conte uh, ranks top. But, um, you know, when you're on top already, the only place you can go is down, right? Yep. Um, what do you think will be some of his toughest challenges for next season? Uh, because, as you know, when Mourinho won in 2014, next season he came in 10th place. Um, well, this last was season, like Leicester City. Yeah, and then Leicester City won, of course. Yeah, but Chelsea yeah, are going to be a Leicester or yeah. Chelsea yeah, but, not. No, I appreciate that. I, I think, think what will happen this year is the eggs will be in the uh, Champions League basket. Yeah. So they've had no Champions League to play for this year, mm -hmm. and indeed no European football. So that's made it the path slightly easier for them. And Jose Mourinho will tell you that because he keeps harping on about how many games he's played. But but if he's successful, that's that's the way it is. So it's going to be harder next year. Mm -hmm. So it's what how he, he puts the priorities. Is it league? For me, it's always the, it's always the Premier League, and then the rest is all and, all, all fitting in the box. And you're absolutely right because Seth Fabregas has already come on and speaking about next mm -hmm. season. He's already said. What was the plus point is this season is they've had so much of time. The fact that they've actually concentrated even a lot on set pieces. Mm. And we do know, I mean, as a coach, as a coach, as a former players, you do know that when you have that kind of time, you can prepare yeah. a team at the weekend yeah. so narrowly, so intense, so focused. Yeah. But now, that, that days are gone as soon as you start to play on a Wednesday. So they, flat, Liverpool, they, they, must, they must have been yeah. doing nothing yeah. in training for set pieces, Liverpool. <laughs> so I guess the first <laughs> test is that Conte keeps his squad together, which I yeah. don't think is going to be difficult. I really don't. I, I don't think players are going to you know, talk about Eden Hazard wanting to, uh, to move, maybe. Leave, but, but I think he can keep them together. Then uh, the test leave. is who you bring in. Sorry? Yeah. Costa might leave. Well, he might leave. Yeah. 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 Well, do you think it's he's going to be a massive blow? I don't think so, because I think it's signs of him. But you like him as a character, just no, I like him being a striker. No, you know I do. That. But I think he's, <coughs> it's he, that element, isn't he's it? replaceable. He's That's replaceable, but it's not many out there who gives you what he gives. No, but he can, I think there's better than him out there. Goalscorer. I think Goalscorer he's been great. I agree with you. Well, but well, you know his character, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he's, he's great for that team. I, yeah. I understand that. He, he's a bit like a Drogba in different ways. Yeah. But, but we know there player. are players queuing up, arguably, to, to go to Chelsea if Costa goes. You know, Lukaku from Everton. He's one who. I don't think he has a character. I'm not saying that it will happen. But I don't think Chelsea would have a problem replacing him. But what I do think is that his problem is how does he or which players does he truly bring in to strengthen his squad? Because he had a tight squad this season at Chelsea because they had no European football. When you play European football, to start with in the Champions League, you've got six group games. That's a big percentage on top of your standard season. You get into the round of 16, then you know it's more games still. And, and I'm sure that Chelsea will believe that they can go very close to getting to the latter stages and of the Champions League. So Gary, Gary, you said that um, it depends on the players that he brings in. What sort of players then should he bring in well, next season? Well, I think when, when, you, when you've just won the league, it's quite difficult to say who, who you can bring in who's going to better what you've got. Signings. Because you, you know, you've just signings. achieved. I, I, yeah, I, I, the old adage is well, you, you buy when you're strong. Yeah. So Chelsea should buy three or four top quality players. That'll liven yeah. the dressing room up. That'll make yeah. people think that the team is not the same team as going to be next season. Everyone's mm -hmm. looking over the shoulder of pre-season yeah. thinking, yeah. I'm under pressure. Although okay. I've, I've played well and I've, we won the league last year, I'm not guaranteed a game. So he's got to buy, for me, three top quality players. A midfield player, 100%. He has to buy a goal scorer. That mm. if, if, if Costa's messing about and mm. doing whatever, go and get your top. Top think, draw, 50, 60 million pound striker, get him in and yeah. then get your defence sorted yeah. out as well. well. Generally, I feel, I feel that the fact that if Costa leaves, he's got not many choices in that. Because I, yeah. I do mention about the fact that the pressure of winning. We saw with Mourinho, two terms. First term, 2004-2005. He wins it, 15 goals conceded. Next season, he wins it again. And the last term, we just were talking about it and the fact that Jimmy and Maka agreed a year ago, He's, he never improved the squad. He didn't go out there and, yeah. and said, you know, your Terry's are getting at that age. He just believed that same yeah. team can do the same job again for the second season. I Even do, though he had yeah. the experience of the first I time. do believe it is the, st the strength of managers and, and top, top teams is to strengthen while they're at the top. Not, yeah, wait, not wait till there's a, a slump and wait till you've not won yeah. the, the, the Premier League and think, oh, I wish I would have bought two or three yeah. players. Do it while you're on top. Yeah. That's, that's so, so, so I think the keeper... 
Courtois is good enough yep. to stay. But if Begovic goes, then they need to, a number two. Um, you spoke about defenders, Steve. You know, they've, they've taken Ake back from Bournemouth, yep. haven't they? But is he going to be good enough? Zuma, who hasn't played this season, I don't think he's going to be good enough. Is he going to be good enough? No. Nope. So you know, arguably, there's there's yeah, one but, to come but in there for sure. Juventus maybe maybe the club he'll go to. Well, yeah, because of you know the obvious uh, yeah. uh, are there aren't they, the BBC. Yeah, but, but yeah. if I was if I was Chelsea and you know, I know that Costa's leaving for sure, I'll certainly put in a huge bid for Mbappe. Mm -hmm. I think the fact the fact that now you're the champions of England. Yeah. You're playing in the Champions League next season. You just mentioned about the factor. It's the influencing factor. Mm -hmm. When you're on top, you can influence big names to come. And you, you, you have to really use that situation but, to your good. But they got Batshuayi there. They signed big in last summer. Yeah, but, but that's why you need... But maybe that's he can you step need, through. But that's why you need two strikers. Because Costa for me is unique. The fact that he just took this season. Well, well you just mentioned Mbappe. Yeah. He's yeah. nothing like Costa, no, is he? Totally yeah, he's totally different. He's, he's, not, he's a youngster. Cheese. He's a youngster. And what's his best position? Is he up top directly? I don't think so. He tends to play wider, yeah, doesn't he? wider. And you still need a focal point. Mm. Chelsea play well in the system that they have with the, with the five, four mm. cluttered in the middle and then the main striker, the focal point. Mm. Now, if you're going to get Mbappe or, or a widest type player, you've got no I focal just, I, point. I genuinely feel he will, he will do well with it. Hazard, just the fact that how Hazard plays his game towards the end of the season, mm. the business end of the season. Hazard's you know, playing well where he yeah, is he's, because, he's he's got drawing, yeah. because he's, he's got been, a focal point. Yeah, but he's doing, a lot, he's doing a lot on the inwards right now than the outwards. He's okay, not on so the byline. Okay, so to conclude yeah. then, um, what, would he, what would be his biggest challenge then? Keeping the players or I, uh, managing his time yeah. with Europe okay. and well, the Premier League? In the Premier League, you get found out the next season. Mm -hmm. I think we were just louding about your Luis, your Kantes, I mean, how Mick Victor Moses have played in that role and Alonso. Not many of us would have sat here and say early season that Moses and Alonso is going to be even first choice throughout the whole season. So for me, it's the second season where I think he will need to make sure with lesser days preparation towards Premier League, with the focus on the Champions League as well, that the teams will be knowing what to expect of Chelsea that they saw this season. And that's happened many, many times. That's why they say is defending the title is always harder so than winning it. First second time. season syndrome, yeah? Uh, Mourinho had a third what season happens, syndrome, isn't it? OK, so what, what then would you term a success for Conte next season. He could win the double this year. I, I fancy him to beat Arsenal. So he wins, the, he, he wins the double this year. So what is success next year? And what is failure? Well, again, success is, is the standard that you set the season before, isn't it? In so if he doesn't win the league next year, is it, that failure? Well, if he wins, if he wins a cup, I, I would say FA Cup, and, and just say he, he goes can't just there. win an FA Cup next year. No, I'm just saying, just say he doesn't win the league and he goes to Champions League final and he wins the FA Cup. So there you go. So getting yeah. to the Champions League final, winning an FA Cup, qualifying for Champions League is, is second, third mm. or fourth. Yeah. That is a good season. That's yeah, a good season. For OK, yeah. that's what we conclude on. Now, we're going to go for a short break, but before that, we're going to show you the best goals from the Premier League, starting from this one, uh, Okazaki um, against Man City. All Brighton. You. Dark blue shirts in there. Oh, what a goal! Okazaki, that is sensational! What a strike. Now Coutinho, and he finds the net. In Herring forward in support. And Song places it beautifully, accurately. Barkley, bound by Jagielka. Woodford retreat, and to their cost. Key, he's got Norton outside him. Llorente makes a run. Sigerson in the middle, he doesn't need either of them. It's a stunning finish. Kyle Norton, who never scored in 140 Premier League.
It is a final opportunity for either one of these teams to reach the finals from Group B. Just to give you a quick recap, uh, ELC have three points. That's one win, but they have only four correct answers. Seiful, who are not here today, have three points as well because they picked up one win. They have seven correct answers. Real, unfortunately, zero points. But if with a win, you'll get three points. You do have three correct answers. Gentlemen, 30 seconds starts now. Emery Chan's squad number is? 23. Correct. How many own goals has Jamie Carragher scored in the Premier League? Seven. Correct. Which rival club plays in the Merseyside derby against Liverpool? Everton. Joel Matip's nationality? Uh, Cameroonian. Correct. Liverpool legend Luis Suarez was signed from which club? Uh, Ajax. Correct. What is the name of Manchester United's training ground? Uh, uh, pass. Pass. What is the name of Liverpool's training ground? No way. Correct. Whoa. Alright, alright, alright. Real, don't give up. You'll have two points for my liking. Yeah. Moving on, Real, question. 30 seconds, your time starts now. From which club did Eden Hazard join Chelsea? Um, no. Correct. From which club did Anthony Martial join Manchester United? Pass. Who wears the number 23 jersey for Chelsea? Pass. Which club did Kante join Chelsea from? Leicester. Who was Chelsea's player of the year in the 25-2016 season? William. Correct. How many league matches did Chelsea win last season? 13. Who did John Terry replace as club captain? Oh! Okay, it's time to salvage pride. Five questions. First question. Who has made the most amount of clean sheets, or rather, who has the most amount of clean sheets in Premier League history? Correct. Who holds the record for the most amount of goals scored in a single Premier League season? Collectively, most number of goals by a team collectively in a season. Chelsea. Correct. Who is the oldest goal scorer in the Premier League, history-wise? Oldest player? Brad Pino. No. Okay. Goal scorer. No, Teddy Sheringham. Question number four: How many nations have been represented in the Premier League? Countries represented. Sixty-three. One hundred and six. Close. <laughs> Which club suffered the most amount of losses in the Premier League in terms of history? Most amount of losses by a club. Wow, well done. Congratulations. Hey. Now, we'll need to tally. We'll need to tally in terms of how many correct questions you got right. It is another win. You've gotten six points. We will leave the suspense till later. Real, thank you very much. Job well done, you're representing your school very well. And guys, congratulations, we will survive uh, another round, or maybe not another round sooner or later. But yes, until the next time, sayonara, doa tashimaste, and whatever, whatever. Bye-bye. Congrats to the ELC International School. They are the winners of Group B, and they're going to go up against Help International School next week. That's happening. Uh, live in the studio in the finale where Roshan will be in the hot seat. And speaking of the hot seat, the man of the hour, Nello Vingada. He's, of course, the newly appointed coach um, of the Malaysian football club, football team, not football club. And who is this guy, right? He's not really a household name. We've never heard of, of him this side of the world. And here we have a profile of him. He's 64 years old, Portuguese, and he's managed countries like Portugal, Saudi Arabia, and Jordan, as well as clubs like FC Seoul. Um, he's, of course, won the AFC Asian Cup back in 96. Uh, he's won the Premier League with Zamalek back in 02-03 and the K-League with FC Seoul back in 2010. Um, Stan, I hear that you have some insider information about yeah, well, Gingada. <laughs> no, no, basically just have a friend who played under him at uh, Zamalek, okay. uh, a top club in Egypt where he was the coach, played under him, he was the champion in 2002-03. Basically, wherever he's gone, he's left something behind. Um, players who work under him, speaks highly about him. Uh, a man that knows a lot about football, loves the game, he's passionate about coaching. Um, I think this time, the appointment of Wingada uh, has been looked thoroughly in comparison to Mario Gomez. I think uh, that was a shock, what happened in 48 hours after appointing Mario Gomez. And then, again, Malaysia was without a coach. We had that, that, that session here as well. I think uh, Nelo Wingada, I think the most outstanding of his CV is I don't think Malaysia has ever appointed someone who's won the Asian Cup before. And he won the Asian Cup in an era where, if you go back to Iran, they had Ali Dai, 
a very good side and Saudi managed to beat I think UAE in the final and Saudi Arabia themselves had a really good players is this, Ali is Karimi and, and, and everyone so is, he's, this, he's, is, he's is, this, is this a gamble it's not a gamble it's it's been it's been a, a thoroughly looked appointment it has I to think. be a gamble, yeah. and then it, it has to be well, a gamble. It cannot be gamble. Yeah. Okay, why, do you, why do you say that? Well, I think most well, of it's outside of yeah. outside of Malaysia. M most most well, of he's, he's done well, are. but he's done well. Most in appointments Asia. are a gamble. Yes, I don't care whether it's, look, whether it's a huge it whether gamble. it's a huge signing as, of a player. You know, Pogba. He's really delivered, hasn't he, for Manchester United <coughs> this year? Absolutely no. Um, so, you know, I, I've looked at his CV. He's got a huge amount of experience. Um, Success. What does his yes. CV tell you, guys? Well. It tells me that he's been at a lot of different events. I think he's been involved either with clubs or football associations, a total of 25 different ones yeah. across a 30-year coaching career. Means he's a journeyman. So, so it means he doesn't stick around too long. There was one club I think he stayed at for four seasons, and that was as long as he stayed. Yep. Um, so it, it ten, tends to imply that he moves on quite quickly. Um, well, he's going to be a from, contract anyway. Pardon? He's what? just got a we, had this, we had this conversation. Well, what does a contract mean? It means yeah. nothing. Yeah, but I'm just saying he's, he's given a two year contract. That's not a long contract. Yeah, but it doesn't matter what he's been given. It doesn't matter what he's been given a five year contract. So, what's the problem with the appointment? I mean, both of you are saying it's a gamble. So, what's, what's no, the problem? No, right we're, now just, with it? we're not saying there's yeah. a problem. So, we're just yeah. trying to. We, we, we don't. Have you seen him coach? No, I mean, his success speaks a lot. And, and speaking, well, no, it's important. It's a gentleman. It's important. Before you appoint, I mean, Gary, you've been in a situation where people need to appoint you. What did they do before they appoint you in, in, in over here? Because he's worked over here. Yeah. What did they do? What do you think did they do before they appoint you? You well, worked in Thailand. Well, I would like to have thought they would have done their due diligence on me and checked out where I'd been, what I'd done, the type of person I was, how I worked, the, the style in which I, I tried to produce players and, and a team to play. Um, so that's what I would hope they've done. Um, and I'm sure that the Malaysian Football Association yes. have done that on this occasion. And you'll have My point is, I'm not saying it is a gamble. I'm saying that just about everything is a gamble. Oh, yeah, because of you of do course, not know. But, but I'm saying you try to do it at the best of it. Yeah, yeah, sure. In terms of how the first appointment was, I think this appointment is better than the first appointment. Mm. That's it's what in, I'm getting at. It, it, and he's got a better track record. Mario Gomez, yeah. for me, has never won any title before he landed at Johor. Yeah. Mario Gomez's no. best ever in his career was at Johor. It seems a yeah. safe bet. It seems that you've gone for 64 I, year I, old I, I who, just, who, who knows a lot about the game, obviously. He has been around, I he's got experience. So it yeah. seems a very safe bet. Safe bet, but the, the one key thing that I would like to look at, basically, after speaking to a few people who've worked with him, who knows him, the fact that he leaves something behind. Mm. Being a Malaysian, being a person who's played for the national team and the clubs around here, uh, you go so, back to a few clubs, there's only very few coaches Bob, of foreign Bob players. Bradley left a lot behind. Left okay, I was going to say, Bob so Bradley left a lot behind. What, 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 what apparently has he left behind? <laughs> what has he left behind at these other uh, clubs? Like the continuity. I mean, if you look at the club, after he's left most of the clubs, Zamalek went on to win the following season. Saudi was strong again mm. two years after he left. So, so, so he does leave a bunch of good youngsters yeah. so who understands the game. time. He hasn't got time to do but that. He's worked, he's, worked, he's worked two, yeah, three years clubs, everywhere and he's done that. But, but this is international no, I'm talking about Saudi. OK, but, do you but know, he hasn't got time to leave yeah. youngsters yeah. and, and yeah. a legacy. No, but he's got to win games. Do you know what I was hoping you were going to say? That historically, when he's left a club or a, a football association, he has left a better team and a better that's individual what, players. But that's what that's what you how you judge a manager, isn't well, it? Well no, I, mean, no, no, I said what's he left yeah. behind. Yeah, that's you, what didn't, I you didn't say no, that. No, I was saying the fact that when he left, Zamalek went on to win, which means he's left a good squad. Okay. And Saudi went on to do well. That's exactly what okay. I said. I mean again we go back to Ferguson's era. I mean you're talking about Brock Bradley, you're taking a piss out of him. But coming back to Ferguson, after he mm. won and and, and Moyes took over the side and a lot was mentioned that this is a site that's been squeezed yeah. to its best. Yeah. Am I right? So Ferguson didn't leave much for the next manager to take over. Right. So for me, you can judge whether Ferguson's been a good manager in terms of what he's left behind, but you cannot yeah. you cannot say about yeah. what he's done over the 26 so, period of years. So, so that is a fine line between right. that, isn't it? So, so he tends to leave something behind. It's okay. not only about himself during his managing uh, turner at, at a club or a, or a country, but yeah. it's about what he leaves behind right. once he leaves. So here comes the hand grenade, OK? Yeah. Does it matter who's in charge of the national side in Malaysia? Because if you don't have the quality, you can't produce the performances. Well, it does at the moment. It does, because where do you start? I mean, you keep saying there's no quality. No, no, I'm asking yeah. the question. I, I no, don't it know does, enough it does, about it does, the it does. That's what I'm saying. It does. It does matter at the moment, because the fact that you've got five games, Asian Cup qualifiers, and, and you've got a squad that is doing decently well in the AFC Cup in Johor. 
So you've got at least seven, six, and, and plus the youngsters coming through from that setup. So you've got at least eight, nine players so who are playing at a very good level. So you trust he's done his homework as well and due diligence, I and he's looked into the squad, he's looked into the, the potential talent. And, and one of the key factors so when you come that's to that, happen. that's one. And the other factor is the fact that the first, one of the first things he said is he wants a local guy who knows the league. And that's why Tan Cheng Ho, who's perhaps one of the most yeah. uh, successful coach in recent times in Kedah, is going to be his assistant. The reason being is he needs someone to really assist him. So I guess he does understand a bit about the culture, that knowing that he needs an assistant who understands the Malaysian right. football. Great. That sounds good to me. So again, let me ask you the question because you know a lot more about it than me. If you know, we said about it being a, possibly a gamble, and I'm saying just about every coach is a gamble, if you could choose any coach in the world to come in and have a positive impact on the Malaysian national team, you know, any of the Premier League coaches, the Bundesliga coaches, La Liga coaches, anybody, is there one that you would take? No, I didn't have a name. I'll be honest, I didn't have a no, name. No, no, I'm saying, yeah. so you can have Pep Guardiola if you wanted. You can have uh, Antonio Conte if you, you wanted. Could, 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 no, what I'm saying is, could a manager, coach, uh, I just at think that you, level, make a bigger difference? Uh, a, not really, because they've worked with really good players. So I would like to find someone who... who I mean, when you walk into a room, you've got to find some similarities. You're talking about your Paps, your Mourinho's or even your Arsene Wenger's, they've, they've, they've worked with really good qualities for many years. So I really don't know mm. if, they, if they drop two, three levels below. The good well, question you asked, I mean, yeah. uh, six months ago, if Mourinho went to take a really weak team, can he be a good manager? That's right. Could he, could yeah. he, could he manage Hull? My, could he yeah. manage Hull City? Could Mourinho Conte get all yeah. of Hull, like Marco Silva did, and, and almost get them yeah. clear of relegation? Could you see Mourinho or Conte doing that at Hull no, City? No, not a chance. I That's couldn't why see I, that. I, no. yeah, so I can't so see it. it was a fair question. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's a fair question. So I think Nelo Vingada, I mean, to get back, yeah. he's got a tough can do job. a job. He's got he's a got really a, tough job. He's got a job. massive job and he's massive got to think job. of yeah. today, not tomorrow. Yeah. That's the only thing I'd say. It's no good yeah. leaving legacies and youngsters who, who are going to be superb and then he's left within a 12-month period. Yeah. He's got, he's got Stan, you, you mentioned about the AFC Cup, right? Uh, we have a Twitter question from Amin Irfan. He says, after the announcement of the new head coach Malaysia national team, do you think the team will improve their football quality and qualify for the AFC Asian Cup 2019? And bear in mind that the last time he won this was back in 96. Well, uh, that was a question, I think, is he a yesterday's man or is he a current man? Mm. Because of his age factor, the fact that you look at more of his titles, I think he's, the last time he won was about 10 years ago uh, before he won a big title. For me, the question is, uh, currently, what is his approach going to be? Um, could, could the Mecca brought up, is he going to go with the idea of introducing youngsters or play your best 11? your senior boys. I think he's going to go with his best 11 because he doesn't have time. So he's going to bring a lot of the boys who are playing at good level, which is the AFC Cup boys, which is mostly from Johor. Felda had a run in the group stage at AFC Cup. So you need to find players who are playing regularly at Asian level in order for the national team to be playing at a decent level in the qualifiers. You're playing Lebanon and North Korea's game has been postponed due to whatever happened. Mm -hmm. And now it's after the Lebanon game. Two games which he's got less than a month to prepare. He's got to pick his best 11. So for me, yes, with the senior boys coming in, you could see maybe damage limitation if you're playing against a side like North Korea. All right. Now, back to the Premier League. Earlier this week, um, Leicester City played Ma Manchester City and, of course, the Foxes lost 2-1. The first goal was very controversial. David Villa scored the goal, but there... Oh, sorry, David Selva scored the goal. But at the same time, uh, Raheem Sterling was offside. So this is what Kasper Michael had to say. Well, if, if he's in the six-yard box as a goalkeeper, the ball's going by him, it's going past my line of sight, that means he's interfering. It doesn't even matter if he has to go for it, he's interfering because I can't see the ball at one point. Um, Christian Fuchs can't get to the ball because he's stood in the way of him. He, he prevents him from swinging the ball, uh, his, his foot at the ball. He swings his foot at the ball, so he's made an attempt. So he's three times he's offside, and um, yeah, it's one of these very frustrating decisions because we've done well up to then. What did you say to the officials? Because you spent a lot of time no, walking with general, the ref at the no, uh, at half time. Yeah, you know, just in general, you know, no one asks the players' opinions. You know, they come in and they tell us the rules, and this is this, and they, they won't listen to the fact that you know it's very different for a goalkeeper. Someone's in your eye line, or it comes past someone, or even though it doesn't make an attempt, you still have to legislate for the fact he's there. You know, you can't see. He's offside sometimes, so uh, you know it, it's a very, um, very frustrating thing uh, to to uh, to talk about because we can't really get involved in the debate too much. All right, so the offside still a very grey area whether players are active or not. Um, the question is, should it be simplified? Should the offside rules be simplified in the game? 
Well, firstly, I think that this rule was, was brought in because you get players who are sitting in an offside position from a free kick, mm. just saying from a, from a right-hand side or a left-hand side trying to swing in across. A, a you get a guy who's sitting in a position completely offside and the ball is targeted at him and he moves and then another guy just runs in. So is that interference in play? Yes, it is, because the target of, the, of, the, of that ball was intent to that guy. It's a similar situation with Ryan Sterling. The ball was going to him, he reacted, he's offside. It's as simple as that. There's only, I don't know. Th there's only one way to change it. Go back to the way it was. If you're offside, it doesn't matter where you are on the pitch. If you're offside, yeah. you're offside. If you're, I don't believe in you're not active and you're not interfering. Mm. If you're on that pitch, you're involved in the game. And if you're offside, you're offside. And it takes all the controversy so away from think, the referee. Why do you think they try to improvise it? Be because, uh, be because they try to make sure that the attackers got the yeah. benefit of the it, doubt, not it, the defenders. If you look at most of the rule changes in recent years, the attackers. they are designed to promote more <laughs> goals. goals. Yeah. Simple as that. So, you know, when I was playing, if you were level, you were offside. Yes. But if you're level now, you're onside. So that favours... It's marginal, I appreciate. You know, you can be in a what was, uh, was deemed an offside position, but now you can be in that position, and as long as you're deemed not to be interfering with play, you're not offside. It, it's a great skill, you know, playing offside. It's a, it's, it's a great skill, and it takes a lot of organisation. Mm. Going up together, back together, sideways together. It, that takes a lot of doing. And, yep. and when, when it was spoilt, when, when he brought the decision in, yeah. players could be lazy and stay in a six-yard box and wouldn't get back. Yeah. And as, as defenders and Gary will tell you, you work in training, push out, squeeze, yeah. leave the space for the goalkeeper, and that's hard to do. You're leaving the strikers in, who are very lazy. Used to say to about you your Quinns of this world. You mean, you mean Filippo Inzaghi is always. <laughs> well, if you if you're offside, then he's got to run back, so he can't be lazy because he's going to mm. let the team down. So he's yeah. got to get his backside in gear and get out with the rest of them. So offside is a very important part of the game, and actually they've made it very difficult for the referee by changing yeah. the law. And I, I think this, they should make it simple. Back yeah. if you're offside. Yeah, and, offside I, and, I, and I can't even blame the referee on that, and I agree with both of yeah. you on that, because I, it's so hard, yeah. isn't I think, it? I think the difference yeah. is, it used to be yes or no, mm. that was it. Yeah. Now it's yes or no, or, or maybe. maybe. Yeah. And, and that's where the confusion comes in. Confusion. Yeah. And, and again, Gary and I on the show, we were doing it, Gary thought it, was, it I, should I, have been I disallowed. I said it was offside. In my opinion, it was offside. And I said, because and of the way the laws are, it's not. Because yeah. it, for me, he hasn't touched yeah. the ball. So, yeah. on so, a technicality... So, what, yeah. so, so that, what you're saying is a grey area of what is interfering with... Exactly, play. what yeah. causes... Because he's not touched it, so yeah. is that considering interfering yeah. with play? Correct. Yeah. Because he's reacted, but he's not touched yeah. it, so it's a lot of grey yeah. areas. So we've said that if the pair of us are on this became committee. future VARs, video assistant mm -hmm. referees, Steve will be saying... No, it's OK. I'd be saying, no, it's offside. And then, of course, you would have to hand it to the referee to have the final decision. But I haven't, I haven't read or heard from any top-line officials their verdict of that since, to be honest with you. So I, I don't know what the general opinion is. They will course, always side on, 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 the, on the official. Always. Well, well an, an ex referee yes. who doesn't referee anymore, who's outside the game passing comments. He would I side on, say, he'd probably still, say... Still side with the referee, I, I would, Nine yeah. times out of ten, yeah. he would, his duty is to say, well, he's seen it in the... That's what he... The, yeah. The, Bit of protection. Yes, of okay, course. OK, so that's what should the solution be then? Simplify, well, go back to the old yes, way? It, for me, because yes. there's so yes. many complications in a game anyway, and the game's 100 yeah. mile an hour, the referees have got such a tough job, yeah. they really have, and, and I'm sometimes the worst critic, but it's difficult for them to, to react to certain situations. Yeah. Yeah. Offside, the, 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 his official goes, he's offside. Whether he's interfering with play or not, mm -hmm. yeah. he's offside. End the story. Yeah. And simplify, then it takes the simplify. The, 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 the referees get slammed week in, week out. We're sitting here, so many decisions besides the offside ones. They've got so much going on. I think the least they could do is simplify it for the referee mm -hmm. and for the game of football. Because so there you go, Reem. Yeah. Three simplified here. Thank you for that. Yeah. Well, Super Sport Daily is done, but we still have My EG Daily for one more week. Happening from the 22nd to the 26th of May, 8 p.m., Channel 816 and Channel 834 in HD. Gentlemen, we're going to go for a very short break right now, and when we come back, we're going to be talking about the Europa League.
actually our trip so far, I mean on special Christmas day, they actually made it really, really comfortable for us. Uh. I do really have to really thanks to them. Uh. It's like we never left Malaysia. Madrid is our home. Wishlist, making wishes come true since 2015. That is our latest episode. Um, it's all about the El Clasico happening on the 20th, 28th of May. Make sure you catch that, all right? Now, next week, Cup Final, Europa League, Ajax versus Man United. Now, the average age uh, of the Ajax team is 22.7, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I guess the question is, does experience matter in a cup final? Steve, Gary, you um, been I'd in say this position. absolutely. When you when you're that, if your average age is 22.7, seven, yep. Then it does matter. If it's 24, 25, then experience and, is and still there. How good are they as well? Yeah, and so yes, and, and look at United's setup, and and the way they go about pragmatic and the way their experience with the manager and the players, it will tell. It will have a big factor in this game. I'm sure it will. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, there, there is no substitute for experience. You know, when you look at the Manchester United squad, regardless of how well you think it has or hasn't done this season, they have so much experience. Um, well, and I, I understand that with youth, there is a, an innocence that can be an advantage. It's almost like that no fear factor. Um, but I think in a huge game, and it is a huge game, I don't care what anyone else says, you can, you can downgrade the competition if yeah, you it want, is. but it's only the it's Europa huge League is a, is a huge trophy to with, win. With the, with the carrot dangling for the Champions League, yeah, and, exactly. and huge yeah. for money. Manchester United. For Manchester United, not just yeah. about money, yeah. it's about the fan base, the global, the brand. Yeah. Everything about this game for Man U is massive, absolutely. And with that carrot, as I say, for the Champions League spot, it's make or break season, I think, for Manchester United and Mourinho. Mm. Stan, what's so special about this Ajax team? Well, I've watched them this season. Um, there's one thing you've got to say about them is they're a bunch of excited boys. Chains are off. Uh, they use what they're good at, which is youth. That's what they're good at. They run at you. They know they're fit because they're very young. They can last 90 minutes better than most uh, uh, older age players, I would say, could last at the pace they go 100 miles an hour, as you can see. They, they, they're bold enough to play we are, what wing backs at 20 years old. Tete on, on the right hand side is 21 years old. I think Larson, their captain, is 24 years old only. Then you've got Justin Clivert, Patrick Clivert's son, it's only what, 20 years old as well on the left hand side. So a lot of youth which can backfire on a big stage like this. I agree with these two gentlemen who's played at this level. Um, but on a night like that, it's a one off night as well. You've got to say that if that's what they've been doing, there's a reason why they're in the final. You've got to respect that. They're youth, they've played with this system throughout the entire tournament. Mm -hmm. There is a reason why they're in this final. And the reason is because they are using their youth to their strengths. And that's, that's what's special about them. Mourinho, he's so right. Mourinho, the fact that he's pragmatic, he'll be even more worried. What are these boys going to offer? Because if you go back to Mourinho's past, he's always played against teams that are good with the ball. That you've got senior players, you know what to expect of them. But with this Ajax side, it could be a bit more tricky. Because now he's facing a side that could just come out 100 meter, I'm mean, 100 kilometers gun blazing from the very start, get in your face, yeah. keep running, put pressure, high intensity, yeah. and ask questions of United's back four. Because we know United's back four has not been bad. They the might best. even get to the back four because of the way United would set up. So yeah. they'll starve them of, of possession. They'll starve them of having you any. You think so completely? They try to. Mm. You could, you have to. That's the only way you can do it. You can't allow them all the possession. Yeah. Manchester United, yeah. you think you, Manchester no, United are going to play an open how, game. How drastic is that? No, well, I agree, but how drastic is it going to be? You have seen how Chelsea, Barcelona, how Mourinho set up You have seen how Mourinho set up. Yeah, but that is again a big side, which means he's got... I mean, when you, you see it's it and you say, side. yeah, this is, a, yeah. this is Europa. But so this is him as the favourite walking into against the Ajax side who's younger. Is he going to be so drastic? Yes, of course. He wants to win the game. He wants to win the game. He will do whatever he feels to win the game. will win the game for him. So, so you, think so well. you think so as well? I, I think, I think well, United else can is going to kill negative. the game. What, no, no, I'm just saying, when has he been positive this year? When, it, when, it's against, a the, against You tell me against what team Mourinho has gone against out... Against Chelsea. One mark, uh, what, That's what? not drastic. He didn't go... No, he, 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 no, no, he, no, no. Against no, Chelsea, no, arguably, he, he killed their best player. He killed their best player. But did he put like 10 men behind the ball, completely being negative? It was it was a good game. No, but it's pragmatic. Did, 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 did you enjoy the game? Did you enjoy the game? Absolutely. We've seen you. What's you we've seen, but in the past, we've seen Mourinho set up a side that you don't enjoy the game. Am I right? Yeah, How many times have you seen pragmatic. that? But that game. Okay. There is a reason why I'm speaking about that game. Did you enjoy that game? 
Chelsea against United, yeah. where United went on one two nil. You can see how much how pragmatic they were, but it was pleasing to the eye. There was a reason to it, isn't it? Because there was sense okay. of football. So, so that's yeah. one occasion okay. this yeah. season that, in your opinion, you why you right. Right. any occasion. So I gave you one occasion. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think the point Steve makes is that Manchester United haven't been an expensive, not, positive not. side this they've season. They've been poor a lot of the season as well. And, I would agree. And they've with been that. happy to play yeah. for games to win one nil. And actually, if they they're going to draw, they, they'll accept it. It would appear to me they don't go out to win games. They go out to make sure they don't get beaten. Yes. So what's going to change in the conflict? That will be number one. No, I was just saying, how drastic would it be? It, no, it would I mean, be drastic. You, you, expect, you expect a Mourinho who's playing against Barcelona, even with Real Madrid, he did that. The fact to sit 11 men behind the ball play, so negative. But I'm just asking, how drastic would it be against Ajax side, which Manchester United are the favourites? But you're, are you're saying how, how fantastic Ajax are. Uh, how wonderful they are, free spirit, they've got pace. Yeah, they've got the, they so, so it has to be pragmatic, just because the, the 22, it doesn't mean to say the walk over. No, I'm just so asking. I'm very basically, to, that's how you, you he think he's going to he approach. Wa he won't yeah. work in any, any other way. He doesn't know how to. All Mourinho knows how to do is win the game, and if it hook or by crook, he will try and win that game, whatever it means yeah. it takes. I would suggest that if you said to Mourinho now, right, you're going to win the game, but it's going to go to penalties, are you happy with that? He would take it, of course he would. You know, it, you yeah, know it's about course, agree, always agree, being but the in fact, it. But the fact that I look the fact that United are the favourites, I would believe that he'll enter that match very pragmatic, but we probably see a bit more essence of what we saw against Chelsea. A bit more of that than a very negative You've United. got to remember, his, but the problem, his but, team is so but, tired at the but, moment but, as but well, at aren't the they? Moment, <laughs> but at the moment, I would not disagree with you as well. The fact that the form, I'm not going to speak, going to bite into that, but the form that United are walking into this final, has been absolutely shambolic. Mm. I would agree with that. Walking into a cup final because you need a bit of form. Walking into he'll a cup get final. every player at it, like he did against Chelsea. He, he, he's up for big games. He, he, he's a big. You think so? He's a big game. So momentum doesn't play a part to a final. Well, it's not because he says he's resting. He's playing kids. He's playing this. He's playing different systems. He's, play, he's just he's messing about with the Premier League. That's why they're still sixth because he's not taking it serious. On sixty six. On 66, he's on sixth. Six, on 66, that's what I'm saying. What's the 66 got to do with it? OK, gentlemen, I have to break you there. <laughs> Let's six, get into predictions no, now. No, six Can we have predictions it? for this cup final? Oh, sixth on 66. Right, <laughs> predictions. Listen, six Tareem. Six at 66. Sorry, six, six, Sorry. six like the Red Devils. But can we have predictions, Steve? Six, no. Um, six, no? No. no, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm going to go for United to be as exactly what I've been saying. Yeah. Deal. I think he'll find a way of winning this game. 2-1 mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. I've gone 2-1 as well. United two one as well. any minutes. Yeah, Man Man Manchester United yeah. to win. And it wouldn't surprise me if it isn't 1-0 across 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. OK, and we have the celebrity predictions as well. Um, Suarna goes for a 1-2... What other what what are the other predictions as there? Oh, my prediction is two one uh, to Man United as well. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna go for a short you break. You always go with what I say. That's what you do. Yeah, I Same. do. But I just don't see Ajax winning this, Steve. No, I anyway, don't. Anyway, we have to go for a short break right now. Coming right up after this, Twitter questions, quick fire round after the break.
Welcome back to Football Countdown. Final final game of the season and it is the race to the top four. Join Premier League Live. We're covering all the matches with Adam Roshan, Gary, Steve, Paul. Full coverage. Everyone's going to be here. Don't forget, 9 p.m. Channel 817 and 836 in HD. All right, time for Twitter questions right now. Gary, Sorry, I'm going to start with you. We're laughing, at the, we're, we're, laughing at the, at no, we're laughing at the individual pictures of us. Oh, okay, your, your, your headshots. Myself yes. included, very oh, much. Yes. I think you guys look very dapper in there. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> moving on to the Twitter questions. Dexter asks, will Spurs be able to compete for the title next season? Since they are moving to Wembley, they always struggle mm. when playing in a bigger pitch. Is it because of the way they play or because of their formation tactics, Gary? Um, I think it will be a, a big test for Spurs next season. You know, they've under Maurizio Pochettino, they've had three seasons where each season has got better. Um, the fact that they're not at White Hart Lane next season and they're going to play at Wembley can work against them. I'm hoping they can spin it round and make it a positive. Um, this isn't being defeatist by any stretch of the imagination. I will be quite pleased if Spurs finish in the top four next season and qualify for Champions I'd, League I'd, I'd yet again. I'd like to see Spurs win a trophy as well. Yeah. yeah. Qualify for Champions League, yes, and win a trophy, win the FA Cup. Or yeah. You know, that'd be mm -hmm. lovely for, for Pochettino and the players for all the hard work over a period of time. As regards the pitch, a bigger pitch, they, no, it shouldn't yeah. be bigger. Mm -hmm. It's a bigger stadium, but not a bigger pitch because they can, they can mm -hmm. put... The bigger crowd, <laughs> you're right. Yeah, you, because you can, you, can, you can replicate the size of the pitch. Yeah. But you yeah. say that, Mac, I, I read recently, and this is why, you know, mm. need to check it out fully, mm -hmm. but I'm under the impression that the size of the Wembley pitch cannot be shrunk, shrunk, should I say, to the same size of White Hart Lane. That amazes me. Well, me too. But that's can, what I read. You can go anywhere, if I go to, if I get a coach's job and I go mm. to a club, yeah. I can change the, the not mid-flow, of no. course, but the start, start of the of season, season. Yeah. you can because there's, there's a maximum and a minimum size mm. to pitches. So you can go identical to what size White Hart Lane was if you yeah. wanted to. That was my understanding of it. But okay. Arsenal didn't do that, right? With, with hybrid Sorry Emirates. to cut you, Stan, yeah. but Steve, next question mm. from Rodriguez. With the emergence of Yoshida and Son, do you agree that Asian players are improving in terms of physical strength and mentality? It, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, but it's getting better and better. I mm. mean, the, the gap was there, now it's starting yeah. to, to close between the quality. I don't think the quality has ever been doubted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Not a problem. Yeah, absolutely right. It's just their attitude and the mm. fitness the levels mental. and the strength. And yeah, everything that, that surrounds mm. being a footballer. So yeah, 100% is getting there, yeah. Stan, next question from Amin. Thoughts on the Malaysian FA Cup final this Saturday? Ah, all right. Uh, I was waiting for that question. Anyway, Kedah playing against uh, Pahang. I mean, if you go back two years before the bleep, uh, Pahang was the cup specialist. They, they beat JDT in the finals of the Malaysia Cup. They won the FA Cup. And then they had a blip. And now Kedah has done that run. Two years in a row, Malaysia Cup finalists. Last year they won, the year before runners up. And again, the Cup final. I just think Kedah have the age because of their youth and the blend of a good foreign setup, which literally Don Krasniki got Kenny also. And uh, the youngsters there are all coming through the national side. Badro Bakstia is an experienced hand. You've got Rizal Ghazali, who's broke through the national team last, last season. But the only thing that sits between them and, and Pahang is the fact that Dola Saleh is a lucky man when it comes to cups. So he might just have that lucky day again tomorrow. But I'm, I'm looking at it and saying Kedah might be the favourites to win this. I know what you're going to say. I totally agree with you, Stan. <laughs> <laughs> totally agree. I can't add anything to that. And it's better to be lucky than talented. <laughs> OK, last question from Alan Chu. Was it unfair for Walter Mazzari to get sacked, although he kept them up in the Premier League? Um, well, I think if you look at the, uh, the record at, at Watford Football Club since the Pozzo family have owned the club, you know, they've hired and fired manager, stroke coach, left, right and centre. It didn't surprise me. I think there's some things that's maybe worked against him. You know, he didn't take on the English language particularly well. Um, my understanding is that there's some unrest or was some unrest in the changing room about his methods at times. Um, and I, I think that's all that a trigger happy owner of a club needs to know. Bang, fire the coach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If in doubt, fire the coach, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's what usually happens. Players Speaking are not of bang fire. and fire, we're going to go mm -hmm. on to quick fire questions. Ooh, is like the it. clock ready? All right, first question Who else deserves their own Twitter emoji, Steve? Um, uh, 
What was the question? Who Steve? deserves their Steve own Mike Twitter Mann. emoji? Anyway, it's just Stanley Stanley Bernard. Stanley Bernard. Stanley Bernard. Okay, Stan, what's your answer? <laughs> Steve McMahon. <laughs> yeah. no, Stanley, with that hair, though. Stanley, Stanley. Yeah, you, yeah. Yeah, you Okay, next fond. question. Should Sigurdsson leave Swansea for a better club? I, I think he's um, a better player than Sw a Swansea player. Yes. Okay, yes. 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 Third question. Which Premier League match this weekend will see the most goals? Steve. Liverpool. Liverpool. Oh. Exactly the same, yeah. OK, will Kylian Mbappe leave Monaco? No. No. Yes. Yes. Yes, 100%. All right, is it a right Ooh, thing for Man United to re-sign Michael Keane? Is it the right thing? Uh, well, I don't think history tells you no. I, I, I think they, they, they're showing that they've made mistakes, lots of mistakes. Mm -hmm. Like Pogba Brick coming back for 89 million or whatever. Keane coming back is a mistake, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You'll be so. at United next season. But it no, is it a mistake? It could be a yeah. mistake. Yeah, is it yeah. a right thing? Um, I think he's a good central defender and yep. they need a good central defender, so I think it could be a good decision. OK, last question. Arsenal or Liverpool to finish fourth, Steve? <laughs> That's funny, Reem. Come on. I mean, there's still a chance for Come them. On. There's a clear chance. It's Mathematically, okay. there yes. is. Yes or no, but Liverpool, it's in their hands. And I've, yeah. I've gone for them it's all season. It's theirs to lose, yeah? It's theirs to lose and mm. not just lose badly, give it away if they, it's going to happen. they could very easily have asked yes. you. Reem could have asked you, you know, in all honesty, Liverpool to finish third or fourth, couldn't of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, why do you... Why, Where's the fifth I, come I, from? I know one thing, right? <laughs> Stanley possible. will agree. Man United won't get in the top four. They've, they've, they've sealed the six. You can see the six at the start, you yeah, can yeah. see the six at the end. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be a very interesting weekend, put it that way, because yeah, yeah. the nerves will be there. He's put Regardless whether you play in Middlesbrough. You've got to agree that he's put every eggs into one basket. Who? Mourinho. Oh, Europe, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what does that tell you? They've got no other basket to play for. Yeah, but there's he, no other eggs. There's that. no more eggs but left. He did that a couple there's of weeks. There's no more Easter eggs left. Yeah, but he did that a couple of oh, weeks. Oh, he didn't. He, had... he still. He was just playing mind games again by saying no, we've got too many games and, and no, I'm not taking the, the lineup. The, the lineups he's put on is oh, not the best. Oh, right. If you want to split them up, <laughs> just split them up. No? Gentlemen, it's been an honor to be sitting here. Roshan will be back next week in the hot seat. So thanks again for having me. And you guys at home, good night. Take care. Have a great weekend. Goodbye. <laughs>